Ladies and gentlemen, it is a real honor for me to be here with you today. And I have to say immediately, I cannot avoid the temptation to say something as in the capacity of the working group chair, listening to introductory speeches. The working group is satisfied with uh, South Africa's uh, development in the area of legislation and institutions, but we are deeply concerned because of the lack of the enforcement. This is, I heard today, it's not new for you. And we are pushing really hard the country to do something in this area. We, we even agreed now on a technical mission, uh, which means that we will be sending our, let's say some, some of our best experts to assist your experts in doing what is necessary to start engaging or engaging more in the enforcement of the, not only OECD Anti-Bribery Convention, but also all other provisions fighting corruption. So I really hope that things will improve soon. If not, uh, I'm afraid that uh, the working group will have to tighten. Will have to tighten the grip, which is not never a very pleasant exercise for the country in question. And now to the recommendation. Uh, contrary to what you might expect, you said we the working group spent almost three years discussing: is there a need to have a new recommendation or not? Finally, in March 2018, we managed to agree that we need a new recommendation, mainly due to the new developments in this area, but also mainly due, also due to, let's say, some new, new topics which have emerged from anywhere. Uh, and we said that we will simply have to deal with it. So we spent roughly four years first identifying topics for the recommendation, we, of course, we reached out to our external partners too. And when we started uh, discussing the, the topics, we, we repeated the exercise, meaning reaching out to external stakeholders twice. Plus, there were numerous other opportunities for them to get in touch with us and to send us uh, either online or through written texts, their input uh, or their, let's say, wishes of what, would have to be covered with the text of the recommendation. We finalized the text in November. We had a series of special meetings devoted only to negotiations on the recommendation. Uh, it could be better uh, because it, you know, legal text could always be better uh, in ideal world. But since we don't live in ideal world, I have to say I'm reasonably satisfied with what we got. If nothing else. Uh, we have dealt with some important new institutes and uh, which will give rise, let's say, to hopefully a lot of many activities of the countries, but also of companies. But they will also enable the working group to continue its monitoring role in the fifth or maybe even later on the sixth phase of uh, evaluations. So what are the new topics which have been included in the, in the recommendation? For the first time in the preamble, we mentioned the gender equality issue, and we also mentioned the importance of new technologies. Uh, those two topics, I'm sure that in years to come, they will move from the preamble into the substantive part of the recommendation with some uh, clear provisions, uh, taking into account both topics, which will mean that, of course, countries will have to do something in those two areas too. But in the substantive part, substantial part of recommendation, we have, for the first time ever, we have dealt with the demand side to foreign bribery cases. I'm sure you know that the OECD Anti-Bribery Convention only deals with supply side. Since uh, following our research in, from 2018 or 19, we found out that only in 20% of cases where the bribe payers are sanctioned, also the bribe recipients are sanctioned, we, it became clear to us that we have to do something in this area. So, of course, we could not introduce a uh, criminal offense of uh, accepting bribes, because that would mean that we are going far from convention. But we did, we introduced many things, uh, asking countries to address the solicitation and acceptance of bribes, and better support companies which are facing bribe solicitation risks. We dealt significantly with sanctions and confiscations, especially in the area of identifying, freezing, seizing, and confiscating bribes in the process of foreign bribery. The brand new topic is known our non-prior solutions. You will hear of them today uh, extensively. 
So you, you I will not spend too much time on that one. I have to say that thanks to so-called recommendation six group, we got very qualitative input from our external stakeholders, our friends, and it was not too problematic for us to draft those provisions. And it was basically, we had the only hiccup at the beginning where some countries were very clear in saying that if we will try to introduce NTRs as mandatory for the countries, they will not agree with the text. So it's still optional. Countries can decide to have them or not. But when they decide to have them, then they have to follow our rules. International cooperation is much more developed now as it was before. For the first time, again, we also introduced the rules on protection of reporting persons. Now, we, following extensive uh, study some years ago, uh, we found that it is simply not enough to tell the required countries to protect whistleblowers uh, without telling them how to do it. So this time we are telling countries how to protect whistleblowers in the public, but also in the private sector. Also, for the first time, we have introduced incentives for compliance. Uh, you know, we constantly, in discussions with the private sector, we heard objections from basic representatives of the companies saying, well, you no, know, development on effective compliance mechanisms sometimes costs millions. So it happens that sometimes if the, the mechanism is really an effective one, that there, there are no cases of corruption, companies simply do not see uh, any benefits from that. So this time we are asking countries to incentivize companies by offering them different uh, let's say benefits in the area of public procurement, official development, assistance, and so on, assistance and so on. Hopefully, this will help uh, companies to make the decision on uh, compliance systems easily. We also tackled upon uh, the issue of data protection, not in the sense that we would be emphasizing data protection so much, but contrary to that, we said that uh, international cooperation, effectiveness of anti-corruption internal controls, ethics and compliance should not be impeded by data protection rules and privacy rights. No, my personal opinion was or still is that in the last years we were going too much into one direction, which means protection of privacy, and we are forgetting everything else. And we suddenly found ourselves in this situation, and when I say we now, I mean law enforcement agencies, but also let's say compliance officers in the, in the companies, that suddenly the data, data protection rules turned into an obstacle for our work. So we want to have a balanced approach, and this is what we are clearly saying in, in the, our recommendation. Those were the new topics. Of course, we, we also broadened or deepened some provisions on topics which existed before. We updated the list of relevant OECD legal instruments which are addressing corruption because there are some other instruments too which were adopted in previous years. Uh, we put much more emphasis on the enforcement, awareness raising and training and guidance. So we really hope that this time, well, already the 2000 recommendation is a very good uh, legal document. We also hope that this time, this one will be equally useful and important and most of all, that it will enable and really motivate private sector to join forces with the public sector in fighting uh, international bribery. I have to say, private sector never had too big problems with that. Contrary to that, I saw many countries, many governments saying, well, the companies are the bad guys and they should only be sanctioned and they should not be taken into account as partners. So I hope really that with this text, which we have in the, the recommendation now, this is now changing uh, insignificantly. Uh, although the recommendation has been adopted by the Council of the OECD, it, it is also mandatory text for the working group members, also for countries which are not members of the OECD yet. As you know, we have in the working group, we have countries which are members of the OECD plus eight other countries. I think there are eight. According to the text of recommendation, the recommendation is mandatory for the all members of the working group, which also includes South Africa. And the working group is mandated uh, to monitor its enforcement. We are already starting gradual monitoring of the enforcement of the, of the recommendation. Of course, first with the topics which do not take too much time to be for implementation. Full scale 
in for full scale monitoring will start with phase five. But until then, we really hope that those parts of the recommendation, which are not too difficult to, to, for the implementation, will be implemented already. And countries which will be undergoing our monitoring from now on,